you need to know that God loves you. Get ready. Today's show is going to bring you hope. Well, hello and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen, licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'm so excited to have back with me my friend Adele Bray. And, Bray, and she is from South Africa. I've had her on previously. And the title of that podcast was Jesus is a Friend of Satanists. And so I've had, I'm having Adele back on because we have a lot of really good things to talk about today. Um, we're really going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead this conversation. Um, but Adele, I'm going to first have you just introduce yourself and share a little bit about yourself. Fantastic. Um, previous years, I would have introduced myself as being Adele Frey. I was a Satanist and then I got born again and I have children. And But these days I am a, a shepherd. I farm with sheep. So <laughs> God has a fantastic sense of humor and I enjoy every moment of it. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you have, you have a lot of land and you have a lot of sheep. You said how many of them do you have? Well, maybe it's small in comparison to the big farmers. I only have 43. But I know okay. their names, and their numbers, and I know how they fit into the family. And um, I, I just love them. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. So, so tell, tell us a little bit about you and kind of what, what is your ministry? What do you do? And then we're going to kind of dive into some other topics. I think previously when I was up, I spoke about me being, um, who was a Satanist. And then now I experienced the love of God. And how I was set free from that. But that was already 30 years ago. And mm -hmm. I just realized again this week how God really used me as a pioneer in this ministry. Initially, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, all of these things were like really strange. And people had a lot of ideas on how things would, you know, should look and must be and, and mm -hmm. must haves and, and all those things. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been a very hard journey. And mm. there's a lot of, I, I would say, um, I paid a price, mm. you know, for this ministry and to be a pioneer in this. So mm. I would describe myself as someone who loves Satanists into the arms of God. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen over the, the 30 years how God really touched the hearts of people simply through love. And when we look at Satanists, they are kind of the, the worst of the worst of sinners, you know, like they are the most unacceptable according to the to the church. They are like the enemy's children and, you know, there's no hope for them. We have hope for the murderers and the rapists, but mm -hmm. the Satanists, they are the obvious enemies. Wow. And um, what saved me from that and my ministry includes loving them into the heart of God. That's so good. And I, I love how you, you say loving them. Um, it's not condemning them. It's not shoving things in their face. It's, it's loving them. Cause really, I think that's where a lot of people actually will get themselves into Satanists and thinking that that is the answer is because they're actually looking and searching for love. Um, and I think this is where a lot of Christians can, can get off on this um, because I don't think they truly know how much God loves them to have that much great of love to be able to love someone no matter what they're doing. Um, so talk a little bit about how you have experienced judgments, even people saying you wear black and you shouldn't wear black and um, just even kind of things that we might think are silly, but you get it. Like you get some of these really big judgments from people in the church. That's right. I've actually gone so far as to say that if you if you do not discern or feel in your heart that I am a Christian and a daughter of God, you do not have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And I'm not talking about you, Heidi. 
but in general, because mm -hmm. the Bible says that your spirit and my spirit will agree with one another that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we look at people and we put judgments on them and we see that everywhere. Even the person who say that they are not racist mm -hmm. will have a problem with something, um, yeah. especially in, in our country. We have a, a very dark past when it comes to those things. But people who say that they are not judgmental, criticize the person who smells really bad in the line, you know, at the shopping center. Um, judge a beggar on the street because why, why should I work but they don't work? So there are these secret little judgments in our hearts when it comes to people. And I believe also that is why it's so important to always have a repentant heart, that mm -hmm. when you realize that you are judging, to continually mm -hmm. repent of that and lay your heart before the feet of Jesus so that he can deal with those things that cause barriers between you and the next person. We mm -hmm. judge people for the clothes that they wear, for the food that they eat, for the jobs that they have. It's, it's like a secret, comfortable sin that people nurture within themselves. Ooh, <laughs> that was a good word. A secret, comfortable sin that we nurture inside ourselves. Okay, I think this is really good because this draws us away from God. And we think that we're being a good Christian by reading our devotion or going to church, but inside we're judging other people. And again, I don't want to, I don't want people to feel condemned for this because I've done this myself. And what I feel like you're inviting us into is to really just go to the Lord and just say, God, I, I repent for judging, help me to not judge. And I think some of this is I, what I would love is for people to, to have an invitation to be drawn closer to the Lord, to, to see his love be bigger. Um, Cause I think you're right that people will judge people who are Satanists as the worst of the worst. And they think there's no way I can, I can be friends with them because they're, they're connected to Satan. Or I think that there's some people that get really afraid and they're almost like scared of the devil, honestly, because I don't think they're, they're operating in spiritual warfare. So they're kind of afraid, like, Whoa, I don't know. I don't want to deal with that because then I'm going to get attacked by the devil. And again, all of this is us not knowing our authority in Christ and knowing the true power that God has. And that even still, if somebody is a Satanist, they're a person that needs Jesus. <laughs> so, Jesus. so talk a little, yeah, talk a little bit about may, maybe a teeny bit about your testimony and then how we can walk in greater authority and power. Well, I think my, what the part of my story that I want to share tonight actually links up with a different testimony that I also would like to share with you today. And that is the one of Rinsuichelor. So when I was involved in Satan, Satanism, okay, let me just slow, years slow ago, you down there for a second, because I don't think anybody in that speaks English understood that. I'm going to slow it down. Rian Suigelar Swig, is his name. And this is another person's testimony. So I just want to slow it down. The, the way you spell his name is R-I-A-N. So it kind of looks like Ryan, but it's Rion. Um, and he's got a very, very powerful testimony. Um, and so I'm going to have you, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want people to be able to track and know what we're talking about. Um, and he used to be a Satanist as well. So go, go ahead and keep going. That's right. So um, when I was a Satanist, I was involved in a Satanic ritual where I... Um, had my first God experience during an abortion. And it was such a profound experience for me after I got saved because I just realized that God pitched up at a satanic ritual and he revealed himself to me. I mean, that's one of the places where you would never expect God to pitch up. We don't be, expect God to pitch up on a sidewalk or um, in a drug den or where a prostitute is, is doing her business. But God is not intimidated by our secrets or our sins or our choices or our circumstances. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I said to God that I would like 
my testimony not to be in vain. I would like him to use my testimony. So when I heard in 2020, this is only four years ago, I heard of this guy named Rian Swigelaar, and he's one of the, or he was, he is one of the co-founders of the Satanic Church in South Africa. Wow. And he made a lot of headlines because they started the Satanic Church. And what they did is they gave my book a sacrifice. They gave my book um, to, which is also available on the website, by the way, to him. And they said that he must discredit uh, my story of, um, you know, coming to God after Satanism. Mm -hmm. So he made a couple of public videos. He was the PR person, the spokesperson for the Church of Satan. And he came against me and he broke me down and he judged me. I mean, the Satanists judged me, just like most Christians also judge me. But I then. Oh. <laughs> so you're getting both I sides. Think... Oh, my gosh. Oh. I, don't, I didn't fit in anywhere, you see. Um. But I then started to pursue him with love. So I sent him a message. I made a video and I said, you know, Rian, it would be so lovely for me. I, it's, you seem like a nice person. It would be lovely for me to have coffee with you. Mm -hmm. And obviously he was very angry and he went back and they did a couple of rituals to curse me. Now, I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know about it. I was totally unaware but I mean I just love Jesus and be, some people also judged me for loving this guy um mm -hmm. I was called out on Christian media you know people saying how dare this Christian girl going for coffee or wanting to go for coffee with a Satanist doesn't she know or maybe she's still involved and then I just left it there and I continued to pray for him and then one day he was invited to a radio talk show and uh, one of the producers in the in the at the station gave him a hug and she, she was a christian and the moment when she hugged him he said he could identify her love with the love that i had for him but still he decided to ignore this and one night and this is very interesting and very um, important information. He was doing a ritual, a ritual for the Satanic Church in South Africa to see who the, if the, sorry, if the Antichrist has been born yet. Hmm. They wanted to get, get that information. And he said he was like lighting the candles and doing a lot of things, which I'm not going into right now. And the next moment, this bright light showed up in this ritual, and he was the only person in the room. And he, he thought it was a familiar spirit. And he asked this spirit, who are you? And the spirit said, I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> and he, he said he had such a fright. He can't say whether that moment lasted five minutes or four hours he, he he can't say but he went out of there and he said he smoked an entire pack of cigarettes because he was totally um shaken up and he went to he went home and he was crying a lot mm -hmm. and the next morning he went to the beach and while he was walking on the beach he said to 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 god he cried out to him he said to him if it's you then I, I would like confirmation that it was you, that it was Jesus Christ. And then God revealed himself to him again. And he said the love that he found that day or that he experienced, he could pinpoint it from the two Christians who showed him love throughout his entire life, which was that other lady, the producer, and myself. Wow. <sighs> and Heidi... It wrecked me because the following day he phoned me and he told me, and by the way, today is the 20, no, it's the 21st. So on the 24th, um, it will be two years. And, wow. and, and he phoned me and he said to me, 
Adele, it's Rian. And I'm like, yo, what do you want? He said, I thought you should know I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Mm. Heidi, I cried for probably a month. It was, mm -hmm. it was, I, it's like, you know, you expect God to do something, but mm -hmm. to know that someone who started the satanic church in South Africa, which by the way, I thought was a blessing. And the reason why I thought it was a blessing is because for so many years in South Africa, it was a myth. People thought it wasn't real. People uh, are just making up stories. Uh, not even believing your testimony. Not at all. And and now all of the all of a sudden there's this guy doing PR work for the Church of Satan. So he gave his heart to the Lord then and obviously yes. wanted to resign from the satanic church. And yeah. they offered him a million rand to stay. And he said. He can't do that because what he experienced from God is so big and so great that he has to turn his back on the church of Satan. So he signed a non-disclosure agreement. He walked away from there. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, famous people, politicians, um, people in the entertainment industry that's involved in the satanic church. And um, he went for deliverance, a couple of deliverances, and yeah. I had the absolute privilege and opportunity to go down to him to Cape Town last week. And we had the most beautiful time together, praying in the spirit, worshiping God. And oh. it was an amazing experience being close to this man who Jesus saved from the, the pits of hell, really. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, a, a couple of weeks ago, um the one of the major financiers from the church of satan committed suicide he's a very high profile person in south africa and because of his death rian could um deregister the church of satan in south africa wow oh my goodness that is amazing. I so, know. It's oh, amazing. so it's so it's like literally not going to be a church anymore officially. Yeah, unfortunately, up well, obviously, people will continue to practice. Yeah, and yeah. there are certain groups that are now mm -hmm. also being formed, but the official Church of Satan in South Africa does not exist anymore. Wow. And that Rian was able to actually deregister it because he used to be the president of it. There is so much yes, redemption in the, that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Wow. But here's the thing. People are even still judging him because here's the reality of it. Two years ago, when he got saved, he didn't look and talk like a Christian within 24 hours. Oh, of course not. Right. Of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there was still a lot of things that God had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's very open about that. He he was still doing psychic readings, for example. He was absolutely convinced there's nothing wrong with it. But over a period of eight to nine months, God mm -hmm. worked with him and convicted him of certain things, and he laid everything down which is such a big testimony because he's now he was at first he was judged because he was a satanist then he was judged because he's not a good enough christian yeah like yeah and i think about there's uh kat von d do you know who she is that's right yes yeah. Yeah, I watched her testimony as well. She was a tattoo artist, um, wears a lot of black herself, and she's been judged as well. Like she's dealt with the same thing. And it, it makes me sad. It makes me sad that that we as Christians would judge people because they're not a good enough Christian or they don't look a certain way. It's not up to us to judge that. But that is not, um, even Rion's journey and his path, we've got to trust that God is God and we are not. And the Holy Spirit is moving and working in and through him. And that's what we should be praying is God 
continue to meet with him, continue to talk with him, continue to keep bringing him deeper into your arms and help him to not, because people can go, go back and, and, and kind of not, not that they, uh, what do you call that backslide? Yeah. People can backslide. Um, but that we've got to have the depth of God's love in our heart for other people and for their differences, no matter what. That's right. Heidi, I am not, I am not, um, it's the right word, condoning. I, I think that's the right word. I still struggle to fit that into my vocabulary. Yeah. I'm not condoning, um, is the approval, as that's the right mm -hmm. word. Now, I'm not approving yeah, yeah, yeah. homosexuality. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I also think um, the way we treat people who are different than us, mm. I'm not I'm not I'm not making excuses for their behavior. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Jesus would just walk around and you know tell people that you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to yeah. hell. Because that is exactly what happened to Rian. Mm -hmm. While he was in church when he was 19 years old, the pastor looked at him from the pulpit and he said to him, because you are gay, God will never love you and he will never accept you. So mm -hmm. in his mind, he thought, if God is not going to accept me anyway, why would I mm -hmm. even try? Right, absolutely. And he turned his heart to the devil. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, oh. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of components at play here, and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not making excuses for anything. Yeah. I'm simply yep. saying that we should, that we should be very careful in mm -hmm. our hearts what we nurture and allow to come out of our mouths. Yeah. Because that, those words can permanently send someone to hell. I mean, that's my, maybe not even your intention. I mean, I, I feel like what you're saying, like, cause you're, you're, you're talking about church hurt. Like to me, this is church hurt, but this is like, this is a, this is abuse. Like this feels like church abuse that there's That's somebody right. who's in power, who's in charge, literally can communicate something with their words and it sends somebody to hell. Like we have the power and authority in Christ to actually win people to Jesus but because we're afraid of choices that they're making, what I'm seeing in this and that you're saying is that the sin has become bigger than God's love. And so in that place, Rian's sin and Rian's choices were bigger than God's love over the sin. And even believing and knowing that God actually can conquer that by loving the person and allowing God the God to do the work in the sin in the person. That's right. Phew, that's big. I would, I would rather spend eternity with a non-perfect Christian mm -hmm. than to condemn them to hell mm -hmm. because they're not perfect enough. We work with souls and we work with hearts and God has created all of us with a with a with a capacity to love, but we should we should we should surrender to the calling that God has in our lives. So what I see when I look at Rian, for example, is only currently now featuring in my life because it's a current situation and a, a current development. But even with all the other Satanists, I feel, well, ex-Satanists who are now Christians, and even mm -hmm. those who are still red, I don't look at them as bloodthirsty, ridiculous, mm -hmm. um, being, you know, people being hated and rejected by God. I see that they are absolutely loved because here's the reality. One of the scriptures that has been really broke, been broken open for me in the last couple of days is John 3.16. And I know it's a simple scripture. We all know the scripture. But um, if I say before Jesus, I'm talking about before Jesus came to earth. Before Jesus, God so loved the world. He loved the world so much that he gave his most prized possession, his son. So before Jesus came to earth, God loved the earth. 
now the world and very often people say you must be haters of the world no you shouldn't that's not the bible says god loved the world so mm. much that he gave in excess he, he gave mm. more than more than what is needed i don't know but but mm. and we should try to have the same heart to love more to, a love that takes us out of our comfort zones a love that takes us beyond the smell and beyond the discomfort. Mm -hmm. A love that should challenge us. If you are not challenged in your in your giving, it's maybe not the right giving. If if you are challenged in your in your love, you're not loving enough. You should be challenged more. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I think that it is because anytime I I have a struggle personally, I'm like ah. This means there's something with me. You know, I'm like, okay, God, <laughs> what are you showing me? So I think that what happens is that we're judging ourselves so much that, and we don't totally know like the real love of God. So we're not being intimate with God. We're not spending time in the secret place. So it's natural for us to just judge others because we're judging ourselves. And so um, to me, I feel like this is an invitation for us to take the, whatever it is that we're doing towards other people, judgments that we have, just have a repentant heart and then turn and look at ourselves and say, God, help me to love me. Help me not to judge myself and, and cleanse that in me. Search my heart, oh God, and know me so that we can have that heart for ourselves. Cause then that's what will outflow. You know, that's that oil that, you know, we get filled up with this oil and then the outflow is our cup overflows in, we're in the presence of our enemies, which is sin. So if someone is choosing something that's sinful, the cup overflowing is us loving them so much, which is what you did to Rion. And he, he felt it. Like he felt that same feeling I felt with Adele that I felt with this other lady. That's something I've never experienced before. That's right. He could identify and mm. pinpoint it. So by the time he left the satanic church and he became a Christian, I think uh, I'm under correction, but I think he said he got about 14 death threats from the satanic church. Wow. He got 400 death threats from Christians. Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing? Like, why would we, why would we want to threaten death to somebody who knows Jesus now and is seeking the Lord and think about the, the impact that he can do in the kingdom of God, just like what you're doing, the people that he can reach that nobody else would be able to reach. Like people feel safe with you because you have tattoos. They're you're, not going to feel you safe with me. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to feel safe with me like they are with you. Yeah. Heidi, and, and when I spend time with him, obviously I could check out these tattoos, right? Because you can see my tattoos and I have some Christian tattoos. But, um, and I know that sounds weird to some people, but I have Jesus Christ tattoo on my forehead, um, mm -hmm. here by my eye, because mm -hmm. a lot of people said I'm still a Satanist. So I, I figured... Um, a Satanist won't tattoo Jesus Christ on their forehead, right? right, right. Um, but but with Rian, he still has a, a lot of uh, occult tattoos. He has a pentagram, um, a 666. He has the Luciferian uh, uh, symbol. Um, but he was on his way. He actually went to a couple of sessions to have his tattoos laser removed. And while he was busy with that session, God spoke to him and said to him, what are you doing? And he's like, you know, God, I'm just removing the tattoos because that is what, you know, the, the right thing to do. And God said, no, but I don't want you to remove the tattoos because here's the thing. Rian will reach people that I will never reach. And, and he will reach people that you, Heidi, will never reach because mm -hmm. of that I'm not I'm not going to over spiritualize this and say it's a connection, but mm -hmm. because people can associate with what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And he was actually standing in the shop last week on the phone, having a, a godly conversation. And the guy behind him was a biker. And 
what when Rion hang up the phone, the guy said to him, you sound like Jesus, but you don't look like Jesus. I want to hear what you have to say. So there was a connection um, because he could, you know, connect to him. So I don't know what God wants to do in the future, but mm -hmm. what I do know is Rion is uh, willing to be obedient to anything mm -hmm. that God tells him to do. Yeah. And he is very committed to be to obedience and submission to Jesus Christ. Come on. That's so good. This is such a good testimony. It, it warms my heart. It convicts me, um, but just really draws me closer to the love of God and just really knowing how big his, like, I just feel, I feel his love expanding as you are talking. Like, it's just bigger than we could ever imagine. Um what I guess I, I would just want to give you the floor with what else you feel like God is showing you before we we I have you pray for the listeners and share your website. Like what else is God showing you these days? What can bless us with what God is showing you? Psalm 42 verse 11. You know that I work with sheep now and I mean, I've been working with human sheep for a long time. And now I work with the animals and I prefer the animals, I must tell you. Um, but I've learned so much about sheep and how the sheep listens to the voice of the shepherd. My sheep knows my voice. And um, this one time I walked in the felt and there was this sheep lying on its side. So I thought, what's wrong with the sheep? Because they don't sleep like that. It's not an accident. And... Um, I walked to the sheep, picked it up, and I thought, this is strange, and I went to Google. So apparently when a sheep fall down on its side, it must be picked up by the shepherd. Another sheep cannot help that sheep to get up. If the shepherd doesn't pick it up that sheep, I think it's a matter of hours. The gases of the stomach becomes all confused and mingled up, and then the sheep die. Oh, so wow. the sheep helped on its feet. But mm -hmm. there's a specific term for that sheep. That sheep is called a cast down sheep. Mm -hmm. And who would know better about a cast down sheep than David in the Bible? He mm -hmm. says in Psalm 42 verse 11, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen is there are certain situations where only God can intervene and change. I mean, I can go to, to all the Satanists in the world and I can preach to them. But, you know, a sermon does not lead to repentance. Um, preaching doesn't lead to repentance. Mm. Um, eating and judgment does not lead to repentance. But the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. So Rian, while he was busy with a satanic ritual, experienced the goodness of God, the love of God drawing him in. And that led him to repentance. Mm. That's so good. That's what we, yeah, that's what, that's what we need to be able to see. And we need to actually ask God for that. Show us that, like, show me that in the midst of the things that I am doing in the midst of my judgment, show me your goodness. Cause we want to be led to repentance. Wow. That's right. And the scripture also says, I have tasted the Lord and he is good. And what do you do when you taste something really good? You order it again. Mm, you, yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. time. You yeah. want to order it for your friends and your family and they just have to taste it and, you know, take a little bite and you just want to share it with everyone because it's good and it's good for your soul and it's nourishment for your spirit. Mm. So good. Would you be willing to bless us with praying for us? And then we'll find out your information on how to get a hold of you. Certainly. Father God, we come to you today. And Lord, I just want to take every listener 
and I want to lay them down on your lap. Lord, hug them, embrace them, wrap yourself around them. Lord, when they can hear your heartbeat, the rhythm of your heart, Lord, we don't worry about our finances and our health or our children, What, Lord, because we are close to you. Lord, I can pray a lot of things, but Lord, I pray that you will know each person, that you will make um, time to embrace them, that you will reveal yourself to them, Lord, because I know that once they have tasted you, they will never turn around and taste anything else. Lord, there are people sitting today with unresolved issues, Lord, circumstances that seems beyond repair. But Lord, I know I've seen during the past many, many years that you are the God of the impossible. When people put a label on someone and say they cannot be saved, you go out to prove them wrong, Lord Jesus. We worship you because you are worthy and you are good. And we love you for that. Amen. Amen. And I also just want to pray for an increase of our hearts to expand, to be able to receive your love. I think some of us are struggling with judgment and not seeing you as big enough, God. So we repent. We repent for not trusting you, for putting our faith in man and the world. And we thank you for forgiveness, but I pray that you can expand our hearts to know the depth and the width and the height of how big your love is. It is such an honor to have Adele on the show, Lord. And so we just thank you and we praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. And you have something coming up that people can actually sign up for electronic class. Is that correct? It's an equipping equipping class. Yes. We call it the SWAT. So it is spiritual warrior assistance and training. Now, mm-hmm. Rian and myself, we are presenting it, but it's only, and I, I don't know when this will be um, aired, but it's only for three months until the okay. 27th of July. Um, okay. But you can see every, every project that we're busy with on my website, adelfry.com. And we have all the information there of the projects that we are busy with. All right. I'm going to just spell that. It's A-D-E-L-E, V, V as in Victor, R as in Rabbit, A E as in Edward, Y as in Yellow, dot com. Um, so you can go to her website and check out Adele and what she does, the books that she's done, and even reach out to her for speaking engagements. Um, I just really want to encourage you to really support her, support her ministry and what she's doing. Um, because to me, this is this is what we need more of because the world is hurting. We have so many people who are seeking minis- things away from God. And it's, it, I honestly, I feel like it's a lot of this judgment that we have. So to me, you're like, you are what we need. And so we need to have more exposure to being close to you. You know, and when I feel close to you, it helps me to actually feel the expansion of God's heart and God's love, which allows me to be able to love other people as well. So thank you so much for being on again. Thank you for having me, Heidi. I appreciate it.